All right, so um, I am going to go over the Beta Flight Configurator um, and the F's, uh, the Kiss FC with Beta Flight on it. So um, of course we've got our standard setup page here. Um, now this is the default um, hex file from the firmware um, uh, upgrade um, or install on the Beta Flight Configurator. No special hex file downloaded from anywhere. So, um, yeah, we're going to go through the um, uh, configurator first, the configuration tab first. Um, so, um, now I also, um, I'm going to link in the description. I did have some uh, issues getting Betaflight Flash to the um, not an issue flashing beta flight, an issue getting it to recognize DFU mode. So I'm going to put some links in the description that will hopefully help you out and get so you can get beta flight flashed on your um, KISS FC. Um, uh, to be quite honest with you, I don't know exactly uh, how it worked because um, I almost gave up uh, but after some determination and fighting with it I did finally get it flashed on there so uh, once you get it in uh, DFU mode the configurator flashes pretty easy you just gotta get it in DFU mode first uh, so um, we're gonna go down through here we've got DSHOT 600 um, uh, I normally run a percentage of 2.5 on motor idle um, speaking of ESCs and motors, you will have to uh, flash uh, BL Heli and configure your ESCs uh, before you put it on the KISS flight controller uh, without doing a little hacking. Um, I just had an old um, a beta flight flight controller, um, an F3, not, not the beta flight controller, just an old controller I had that uh, had beta flight on it, and I used the BL Heli pass through through that to get the ESCs flashed. And then I hooked it up to the um, a KISS FC. All right, so going through here, board alignment is standard unless you want to rotate your board. Um, then we've got uh, serial based. Uh, once again, I'm running the XSR FreeSky uh, receiver. Uh, we've got S bus um, here, setting set. And then we've got um, VBAT right here. Uh, you'll have to put it as ESC sensor. Um, it's not pulling from the ESCs. That's just the um, configure the configuration way for it to work. Um, just through research, I find research I find that out. Um, so um, also through here, I didn't touch any of these. Uh, current sensor um, is here. Uh, I've got that on and working. I've got a current sensor on my PDB. Um, You'll need to put that on onboard ADC. I uh, haven't messed with any of these settings yet, so I'm sure they're not going to be right on. I'll have to mess with them, and that's going to be according to your uh, uh, current sensor what them settings are going to be. Over here, I've got 4K, 4K. Um, and my understanding, well, you can't run 8K, 8K because it's going to be 100% CPU load. Uh, from my understanding, you can put 8K to 4K. But uh, even though you put 8K here, I think it still only sees 4K as far as my research has shown. So um, I just assume I'll put 4K, 4K. Um, going on down, uh, you will have to enable soft serial. Uh, so then you'll, once you enable soft serial, you'll save and reboot. Then you'll go to the port tab. This is where a lot of the, to get the current sensor and the voltage reading on the minimum OSD. Uh, which you'll know how I got all of it wired up from a previous video. Um, um, uh, by default, the soft, soft serials are not here. Uh, the only thing that's checked is the, uh, that's enabled, the MSRP is the uh, BCP, which is Virtual COM port. Um, uh, through my research, um, uh, in order to get uh, my telemetry and current center to work, um, and my on-screen display. Um, I don't know what are these settings. Uh, well, I, I do know that, that I had to put all these settings on in order to get it all to work correctly. So UART1, um, through my research, said for me to put uh, MSRP on here. All right. 
uh, and then on UART2, which is my receiver, you're going to uh, turn on uh, Serial RX, and then we're going to go down here to Soft Serial 1, and you will put Smart Port. Um, now, once again, this is uh, with XSR running telemetry, so uh, you may or may not, if you're not running telemetry, have to do this sort of smart port. Um, so this is what I've got here. These are all the settings that's made. And I've tested all everything to make sure the voltage and the uh, current sensor is all working. Um, so, all right, now we're going to, I'm going to check this right here just to make sure that all that stuff changed and changed anything. So now uh, the rest of these configurations are pretty straightforward. Uh, you may or may not have done them before. I wanted to put show you what I've put uh, that I do kind of standard on all my beta flight flight controllers. Fail safe. I usually change this to five instead of ten for my set stage two. That gives me five seconds instead of um, uh, ten. Um, or actually, it's point five. Point five seconds. Um, also. Uh, throttle I change it from auto to hold that way um, I do instead of falling out and sometimes if you don't have hold on uh, it will kind of tip or fall and it's harder to recover if you are able to uh, get a signal back PID tuning uh, these are all pretty standard haven't messed with the PIDs um, or the filters um, these are my standard rates uh, for uh, non-racing, uh, so standard acros 1.75, uh, 1.18 1 on uh, pitch roll and yaw, and then super rates are uh, 80, 80, 80. Uh, I usually do a 0.15 expo on both. Um, for angle mode, uh, like I said, I, I use that. I leave that enabled just in case there's a time I can't see the quadcopter. Um, but I do change this from 5.0 to, uh, to 7.0 to make it a little bit more snappy. Um, going on down, TPA, I normally turn up to 0.25. Uh, receiver for Warrior Free Sky, uh, XSR, um, RSSI channel 12 is what I use. Um, your configuration may be different. Um, that's just what um, I have configured. Um, and then you'll need TAER 1234. Um, I usually use some RC uh, and y'all dead band um, of two. Um, right, moving over to the motor tab or the mode tab. Um, these are just the modes how I set them up. You know that'll be different compared configure your be different depending on your controller. Uh, don't do nothing in adjustments, servos, motors, um, all this stuff works as standard, motor one, motor two, all this stuff works just like it normally would. And then there's nothing on that. So I just kind of go through the tabs one more time. I'm not forgetting anything. Um, also, I'm going to provide you with a dump here. Um, in the description, I don't think it gives you enough room to copy and paste the whole dump. So I'm going to scroll through it um, just to, uh, 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 so you have all the settings here just in case there's something wrong. Uh, with your um, quad, you can kind of see what my settings are and uh, kind of cross-reference it. Now, I didn't do any special commands or anything like that in the CLI. I was able to do everything in the GUI. Um, so let's scroll down through here. If you can see, I have KISS FC 3.1.7 April uh, 3rd. Um, so I want to try to slowly scroll down through these and uh, hopefully... Uh, they will be helpful. Um, now, I did notice that uh, when you go to the wiki page, that um, um, 
it did say if you're going to use KISS ESCs um, that uh, you might to enable the current on the KISS ESCs you may have to do some special commands I didn't have to do any of that to get my current sensors uh, to my current sensor on my PDB to work um, I have no LEDs they say that that works now but um, I find that that's more of a hassle. I'm going to put LEDs on my on it, but it's just going to be a standard board with uh, a voltage going in. Just still scrolling through that. So um, as I finish this last part of going scrolling through this dump, um, I hope this video was helpful and uh, that maybe you won't have to do as much resources searching as I did in order to get this stuff to work um, but uh, it really wasn't that bad once I got everything wired up almost down to the bottom so uh, once again thank you very much for watching and I hope this content has been helpful in some way, form, or fashion. All right, there we go. Thank you very much.